Hey everybody, I'm AJ Fry and this is Mistakes Were Made, the podcast about the more memorable mistakes that we make in our lives and how they affect us. In that spirit, I only record one take of my introduction and outro while aspiring to include a full, raw, and uncut interview. So if I make any mistakes reading this, I keep them in. My guest for this second episode is none other than Canadian actor Laura Vandervoort. As you'll hear in our interview, she was my very first in-studio guest when I started hosting a show called The Circuit for Space Channel here in Canada back in 2008. Over my 10 years as a host for space, I believe I may have interviewed Laura more than anyone else. It wasn't just in-studio, of course. It was Q&A panels at various fan conventions, red carpets at events, and of course also on the set of her space series, Bitten. Fans of the show might recall I had a very small cameo in one episode of the first season. It was a fun day shootout in Hamilton. Uh, there was, uh, oh, there's there's my mistake. <laughs> uh, the one day shootout in Hamilton was lots of fun and my scene was of course opposite Laura. But despite my best efforts, nobody on the Bitten team or at Bell Media took interest in my idea for a spinoff series about the adventures of Max the Doorman. I am of course kidding, that would be a terrible show. Anyway, Laura has always been genuine, kind, and awesome to work with, so even before I figured out what the format of my podcast would be, I knew she would be the first person I would reach out to to book as a guest. Unfortunately for us, she said yes. I found inspiration for the format of the podcast in the TIFU, or Today I Fucked Up, subreddit, which is where folks from all over the world submit stories of mistakes that they've made and what happened as a result. As you'll hear off the top of our interview, on the night of the live show, I was making some mistakes. So I'll be back after the live recording to offer some corrections and further insight into some of the things that we talked about on stage. I'll also have a word from our sponsor and a tease from the next episode of Mistakes Were Made. Now let's head to Burdock Brewery on Blue... St- <laughs> now let's head to Burdock Brewery on Bloor Street. I don't know why I wrote that for myself to say, but I did. Uh, in Toronto on the night of Monday, August 5th, 2019. Enjoy. Eleanor Roosevelt said, Learn from the mistakes of others. You can't live long enough to make them all yourself. I'm AJ Fry, and mistakes were made. I kind of made a mistake saying that. Uh, my guest has been a familiar face. Oh my gosh, I skipped the wrong script. <laughs> this was a huge mistake. <laughs> My name is Laura Vandervoort. <laughs> Can I fix your back pocket? What's wrong with my back pocket? It's, it's not in. Oh. But I, I mean. How did that happen? All right, let's just sit down. I, I can remember most of this, I hope. Laura Vandervoort, star of Bitten. Star of the upcoming new series on Netflix called V Wars, the upcoming short film that she's written and uh, co-produced, produced produced all kinds of things, Age of Dysphoria. Am I missing anything else? Oh, and then the Soska Sisters uh, film, Rabbit. Give it up for Laura Vandervoort, everyone. (laughs) Teddy Wilson in the crowd was just telling me, you look so relaxed up there. I'm like, okay, let's try and relax into this. You do look relaxed. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, no, I do actually, sitting opposite you, Laura, because we go back a long time now. Uh, you were in my very first interview at the Space Channel almost 11 years ago to the day. The first? My first interview on Space Channel. Aww. Yeah. Uh, you were I there? didn't even know you were so prepared. Back then? <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know what happened <laughs> since then, but that's fine. Um, yeah, but... Uh, a, a lot has changed in the world uh, of uh, the Canadian entertainment industry. We're both at very different places now. Um, what's, uh, what's your take on the scene right now? It's been 11 years of change. We've got Netflix. You've done uh, you know, a big series, Bitten. You're doing all kinds of other projects. Do you think we're in a better place now in the Canadian media landscape than we were 11 years ago? To hit you with a heavy question right off the top. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I should have grabbed my notes. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yes and no. Uh, I have issues with some of the Canadian content that we've got, like TIFF. TIFF still doesn't honor its own. It doesn't invite Toronto locals, things like that. It's become very Hollywood. So that I have an issue with that. I feel like every year the TIFF press release is like, more Canadian films than before. Yeah, sort of. Okay. I mean, if Brad Pitt's in it, maybe, but I, I just feel like there's a fine line right now, and I think we need to support more of the Canadian content. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Weird podcast and all. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get so serious. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, l- let's break it up a bit. Let's talk about uh, your upcoming project, Age of Dysphoria. Uh, this is pretty cool. you got Gordon Pinson in there, who apparently, according to the interwebs, you are related to. Yes, uh, Gordon Pinson is our lead actor. He's actually my third cousin. He was my mentor growing up. Um, so when I started acting on Are You Afraid of the Dark? <laughs> Were we, we weren't like on around at the same time. Did we ever cross paths in audition waiting rooms? Were you auditioning it's up in Montreal? It's quite possible, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And Goosebumps and like I that was whole always crew. going out for Goosebumps also. Yeah, yeah Ryan Gosling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many of us up but there. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, Gordon was my mentor, so I wanted to work with him for 22 years. I'm aging myself. Um, and so I created this film, Age of Dysphoria. Mabruko's here. He's our first AD. Oh, Say cool. hello. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Gordon agreed to do it. I was shocked. Yeah. Uh, he's 88. And uh, it was uh, it was a pretty badass shoot. I mean, he, he was incredible, exactly how I expected him to be. I was, like, crying in between takes, just, like, looking at him, because it's, like, full circle for me. Right. I think I was probably, like, annoying him with my, <laughs> oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. But, uh, yeah, so we just finished post-production. Very cool. It's incredible, yeah. And you're doing, like, an Indiegogo campaign to help uh, uh, with production costs, or what's the story there? Yes, and we've surpassed it by 200%. Oh. Yeah. So thank you to everyone in this room. <laughs> no, none of you knew about it. It's fine. But that's, that's the thing, though. We do have this wonderful geek culture, and now you are like firmly engrossed in it, moving from a show about werewolves into a show about vampires. Do you have any plans of <laughs> escaping, or are you just I'm enjoying the I'm never going to be human again. <laughs> Are you a vampire in this show? I can't say. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what, but what? it's great. Sci-fi has been so great to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I do appreciate it. At Smallville was like my first entrance into sci-fi playing Supergirl, yeah. and that propelled me into more of that genre work. But I do want to mix it up when right. I can. Comedy. Romantic comedy. Well, y- we've talked about this before. You were in TED. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Mr. Seth MacFarlane there, and apparently yeah. you had like a bigger role, but you know, so much of these shows or the films get you know left on the cutting room floor. Hell, yeah. What happened there? <laughs> like, can you expand on what might we have seen if you had been left in? Um, there was a character um, I can't even remember his name now. It was so long. Who had an accent and had a wig on, and he was just like a crazy character. Uh, and we have a romance, and Ted sort of walks in on us, and. Th- there was more of a, a, a B, C, Z storyline that I was a part of okay. <laughs> that clearly got cut. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was the, the romance with another character, and that's gone. So is uh, Age of Dysphoria a comedy then? Have you? Uh, no, uh, no, it's a drama, but yeah. I'm human. Okay, well, so that's, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I know from you know looking out at the crowd and, and, and who's come in, a, a lot of folks are frequent you know attendees of the comic book conventions that we have both worked so many times. What's the experience for someone like you actually going to those things? We're not in that environment right now, so can you talk about it a little bit from the... <laughs> I mean, usually we're up in front of crowds that are entirely there to... Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. s- see you and, and talk about your career and stuff, but like, what are those events like? Are they stressful for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually... I mean, this is maybe what I wanted to open with. Okay. Why? Because I, I put out invites to you know all of our guests, and the one who is the most nervous about this is sitting right here opposite <laughs> me. So why did you agree to do this? I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> and you're pretty cool. Aww. But yeah, you were, you were pretty nervous about coming up here talking about mistakes. Well... Yeah. Listen, I'm not good with live audiences. It's not my thing. I d- I'm, I'm an introvert. So Have this you done is any like theater? Fuck no. No? <laughs> no. no, no Stand-up no. comedy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, and, and doing the comic conventions has gotten me used to this. Yeah. But it takes a lot out of me. And, and meeting people at conventions, I mean, I shake everyone's hand. I hug everyone. Like, yeah, you're, you're not supposed to do that. you're absolutely great with your fans. I, I, yeah, I know. It can get a little... Yeah, you get sick every weekend after oh, doing you do. that. Totally. But it, I like doing it because they're the reason that I continue to work because they're awesome. Yeah. You do get some crazy people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to 
expand on that for our entertainment and all? Uh, the first convention I ever went to was San Diego Comic Con. Oh, uh, well, you know what? Ki I mean, I've been to Fan Expo and Anime North and stuff, but like my first working convention with Space Channel was going down to San Diego Comic Con, and that's yeah. a whole other experience. Show of hands, who's been to San Diego Comic Con? Actually, you know what? This is a podcast. Make some noise if you've been to San Diego <laughs> Comic Con. <laughs> Listeners can't hear. Okay, so like a few so people a know what room. we're talking about. It's yeah. it's insane. I've never been to anything like it. Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of energy coming at you. A lot of people that know a lot about you um, and, or think they know a lot about you and more about your character than you do. But the first gentleman I met, I was just cast as Supergirl, rolled up his pant leg and had my face tattooed on his calf. Oh. And he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to run or like high five you. And then I think I said something like, you know you're going to the grave with my face on your leg. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, good on you? Wow. Yeah. So that was like my first fan encounter. It, it, then some it's other all gotten people kind of better since then. Well, some people give me Ziploc bags with like white cream in it, and I don't quite know what it is, and they just like leave it on the table. Yeah. Yeah. One guy was like for our children and just like left. So. <laughs> Guys, it's so much fun. This is why we. That's why we have security guards at these things. I've never had anyone hand me a ask. bag of mysterious substance before. Wh white cream. Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't know how we move on from that. <laughs> I, I honestly do. Thanks uh, for that. I honestly do have my own story of a tattoo. It's a little long, and I don't know if we should go into it, but it could replace the Reddit story if you, if you want to hear something crazy yeah. from my own past. Yeah. yeah. So before the time of, uh, of being on YTV and Space Channel and stuff, I was just some idiot basically with a website where I had what was an early version of like Instagram where I had this webcam image that I would update every once in a while and I would occasionally go live. But it wasn't like Twitch where you would go live and it was live video. It would like take a photo every 10 seconds and update the, the photo so you could watch that on the website. And I put out creative content and stuff. And I was part of a sketch troupe and we shot in our... Um, building and like showed the front of the building in our sketch series living in downtown Toronto and I recorded these audio blogs that I also put up on my website where I mentioned I was living at 90 Adelaide Street at the time and then I got this email from a fella named <coughs> who told me he just got out of prison in the US was in love with me was coming to Toronto to be with me to run his hand down my scar send me a poem and a photo of the tattoo that he got of my symbol on his shoulder. I have this little A symbol that was on my website. Funny enough though, the tattoo that he got was actually of an Avalanche Snowboards logo that I had a plaque of and had a photo holding the plaque on my website. So he mistakenly put that tattoo on his shoulder. Did you? Did you clarify? We were married for three years. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, it was before I met Zara. Right, uh, right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Uh, no, I went to the police because, you know, stalker letter and... Uh, <laughs> snitch. <laughs> uh, but you know what they told me uh, is that because it's a letter of professing love and not intent to harm, they couldn't do anything about it unless what? I told him to stop contacting me and he continued. Then it's harassment. But if it's just professions of love, you really can't do anything. So did you write him and ask him to stop? I sent him a very well-worded letter informing him that I you know, showed lots of people his poetry and made very clear that I was not interested in him. And, uh, and yeah. did it stop? Uh, I had some other weird interactions as well. I was part of this sketch troupe, and um, there was a guy who I think it is. I don't know if I should even be putting this out there. <laughs> On the internet at this point, but it's been long enough. You know enough. he's listening. I don't know if he is anymore, because here's the thing. I thought when I got YTV uh, and left my you know sketch comedy scene uh, behind, all the like stalker stuff would be amplified, because now I'm reaching a national audience and such. And as soon as I was done with the sketch comedy scene, I've never had anything as terrible ever again. Um, so I think it might be this guy who was trying to terrify me to leave the sketch troupe that I was in so that he could become friends again <laughs> 
with one of the guys who was in the sketch troupe. He was just doing some weird subterfuge, and I, you know, I'm a bit of a computer geek, and at one point I actually did some IP tracing and figured out like the location of the guy who was sending us some of these weird messages and such. So I have my theories as to who it is. I'm not gonna name him, but name him. No. Name him. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, I'm on to you. But, uh, That's crazy. Yeah, but let's talk about some of your crazy stories that we've been talking about. I, I wish I had my script up here because I actually reached out to uh, Dagan Frickland from oh, Bitten and yeah. said, hey, you got any stories of anything going wrong on the set of Bitten? And she told me that there was the one bee? day. Hmm? Th never mind. The wasps? <laughs> Well, what was going on with the wasps then? What you jumped she, on that. She, she just say? said that you were like swarmed by wasps while shooting one scene and you were a total trooper. No. Well, I mean, yes and no. I, I get swarmed by wasps for whatever reason often. Uh, it's, it's like my superpower. Um, but we were doing a scene where there's a huge explosion behind me. I mean, we had one take at this. This is on the show Bitten. I was a werewolf. Uh, not in human. And I'm supposed to have two bats in my arms, and I, it's like this I big moment the scene where vividly. I'm like yeah, flexing. It was and huge and awesome. Yeah. And, and then there were wasps. a wasp came, <laughs> and I'm terrified of insects. And it kind of just like was going around my head, and I'm holding it, and they're like counting down the explosion. I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. I mean, I have, they have to, we have to, I have to do this, and I'm yeah. terrified. And it just kept going around, and the explosion happened, and the second they yelled cut, they just, well, they kept rolling because they knew I was terrified. And then there's this, I think you can see it behind the scenes, me kind of like, I'm super um, badass, and then suddenly I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> so that's probably, yeah, that's her only story. Right? No. Okay. <coughs> you also bonked your head on a table? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. But you, you sent me a message also, because we've been talking about the show a little bit uh, before coming out here. You've had, like, lots of injuries, and this is your mistake, is you just agree to all kinds of things that you probably shouldn't agree to, like appearing on podcasts. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I do have a problem. I am working on it, and it's saying yes and trying to please everybody. Right. Uh, and because I'm Canadian. So... I guess the first story would be bitten. Um, we had like a five minute fight sequence that happens down a hallway in a foyer, a foyer into the kitchen with pots and pans. And I, he's supposed to smash my head into a table. <coughs> and he did. I didn't get my hands out fast enough. And I, I came up and I'm like, whoa, something's off. That's weird. And I continued the fight scene and we cut. And I knew s there was like blood trickling and I didn't want to upset anybody because I knew we had to do another take. So I went over to the hair and makeup and I was like, can you do me a favor? C is there anything wrong with my face right now? And they all just went <gasps> <laughs> And it was blood trickling down from my eyebrow. I had split it open and it was like a huge goose egg. I'm like, don't say anything. We have one more take. So I did another take and then the director came over to me and he was like, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, 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 what's up, what's up? And he, he sort of moved my hair, he's like, <laughs> All right, that's the end of the day, guys. Go home. And so I, yeah, I had like a concussion and, and the whole thing. But we actually did do one scene after that. <laughs> they just moved my bangs over the goose egg. Right. And we did like an emotional, beautiful, romantic scene while like trying to keep the blood in. <laughs> so. Laura Vandervoort, a true trooper here. Yeah, yeah. But um. There. <laughs> Th there are others, but I'm well, not sure if we have time. We, we talked on the phone, and we got a little bit more time here. Forget the Reddit stories. Let's talk about this audition that you had involving a chair, because I've had some weird audition experiences as well. Do you want to talk about yours first? <laughs> well, I can quickly tell you that uh, when I was about 16 or so, I auditioned for a show that was shooting up in Montreal called Undressed. Uh, anyone familiar with what this show is? It's essentially, I describe it as like uh, softcore pornography for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is. Like the, the premise is that there's a storyline uh, in high school, a storyline in college, and a storyline of kids who are just you know, getting out of college and into the you know, workforce and such. And it all deals with sexuality. So I get this audition to play either like Jack or John and they're both described as like ruggedly handsome and you know charming and good looking and stuff and I'm looking at these character descriptions and I was even more gangly and awkward and such when I was 17 than I am now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a good burn. You do got those comedy chops. 
<laughs> so I was like, ah, I'm not going to get either one of these parts. But if I want a fun story to share later, and if I just you know want to intimidate all the other people in the audition room, one of the scenes I was supposed to, or the character removes their shirt. And I'm sure you know this. You're not supposed to actually take your shirt off in an audition. Yeah. But <laughs> I did. And then I kept it off and walked out into the long hallway of everyone else waiting to audition and walked right past them and put it on when I was out of the building. That's good. It, it, it makes them all nervous. It, it yeah. distracts them. I ended up booking a part. Hell yeah. <laughs> it wasn't Jack or John. <laughs> it was a, a very soft boy who was put upon by all the ladies <laughs> in the uh, episode. I had a gag where uh, the character constantly got erections, but... Uh, they deem that, I guess, too hot for the high school crowd, and then they cut that out, so. I don't know why I just looked at your wife when you said that. <laughs> I don't know either. It, it felt appropriate, sorry. <laughs> so that's Aww. my crazy audition story. Okay. Yours was a dramatic scene. Yeah, Do yeah. you remember the casting director? No, not going to name them, okay. but... Uh, is it, it someone like big in Toronto or was it somewhere else? LA. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know any LA casting directors. I don't either anymore. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, so it was uh, it was a dramatic scene where yeah. my um, my son had just gone missing and it was uh, like a poltergeisty sort of thing. It's anyway, it's a horror movie, and I had prepared for like a week and I got in the headspace and I had my music and I was very emotional and I was like I do this thing where I just rub my eyes until they're red and it's another thing that I shouldn't do I'm sure um, but just to get into it and so I walked in we waited in the waiting room for like 20 minutes I walked in sat down she said oh shoot shit I can swear um, I meant to WD-40 that chair it's really really squeaky uh, do you mind and I'm thinking you know I'm, I'm just like super folk yeah sure yeah. so she leaves the room and gets a WD-40 and I'm sitting there and she walks back in so I just I'm keeping my eyes to myself staying in character I stand up and she hands it to me <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay. And so I get down, WD-40, her fucking chair, <laughs> sit back down, and I'm like, uh, you know, I, I'd really like to get going. I'm, I'm, I'm in the headspace. Oh, you stain the floor with the WD-40. They had a carpet. <laughs> I'm just going to go get a rag. Comes back in, hands me the rag. <laughs> I clean the WD-40 off the grounds. The scene sucked after that because I was just pissed. And that was my horrible audition story. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a weird, it's like a power thing sometimes in casting. And yeah. I mean, I'm Canadian and I'm newer to her. And, you know, she's like, just Cinderella the shit out of this. And <laughs> yeah. That's weird. You are too nice. You say yes to too much. I do. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, yes. Well, we'll wrap up. Okay. But you want to talk about the scar on my wrist? How that happened? No. <laughs> yeah, now I do. What happened to your the wrist? The jigsaw. Jigsaw. Did well, I yeah, tell I you about, about this. that? Yeah, I, you didn't tell me about it, but you told me that there was like something pretty... Yeah, that was another situation where the, I was uh, I was on a motorcycle in the rafters. I wasn't riding it, and my character needs to stop the wheel from spinning. This is a Saw movie. So I had like a rebar that they wanted me to jam into the moving wheel. Mm -hmm. And we, we did it a couple times, and the director's like, I need you to choke up on the rebar a little bit and get closer to the wheel. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I actually did say, I think I'm going to hit the bolt if I do that. No, nah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And I'm like up in the ceiling on the bike. So we roll again. I choke up on the rebar and I, I go to jam it in. I'm supposed to be screaming. I was screaming because the bolt went right through my, my wrist. Oh. And I was already covered in fake blood. So I knew something, again, was wrong. They brought me down and I'm like, something happened but they couldn't see it because there was fake blood. So to take off the fake blood, they used alcohol. Oh! <laughs> and it was wide open. You could see the tissue and the fat. And they put a Superman Band-Aid on it <laughs> and then covered it in blood again and went back to work. <laughs> and then I got a, 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 what do you call it, a shot for the, because it was rusted bolts, a tetanus shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. My mistake. Yeah. Hopefully this was less painful than so much of everything else that you've but Do done. I need a tetanus shot after this? I don't think so. Okay, good. Laura Vandervoort, everyone. Thank you.
Mistakes were made. Thanks again to Laura for bravely accepting my invitation. I hope you haven't been horribly injured in the month since our interview. Uh, I should mention that when I told the story of my email from that uh, guy in the U.S., I mentioned he wanted to run his hand down my scar. I probably should have provided some context to that. I don't have a physical scar, but at the time I was recovering from a major heartbreak, which is or was probably referenced uh, as a scar in a blog post or poem or something that I put on my website way back then. Now, before we conclude this episode, I've got a sneak peek at next week's episode with media personality Marissa Roberto, just on the other side of this. This episode of Mistakes Were Made is brought to you by Instabail, Regretfully's new companion app for breaking plans. Have you found yourself committed to an event, date, or hangout you're not as keen on as you once were? Instabail's unique algorithm mines your digital conversation histories with the person or people you're bailing on to automatically generate an acceptable explanation for why you're not going to be able to make it tonight. Sorry! The only better feeling than finally breaking the plans you weren't looking forward to is avoiding the anxiety and effort of doing it yourself. Don't just bail on your plans. Instabail. Use Instabail to cancel your plans today to receive a complimentary delivery of a fresh hot pizza and a comfy pair of pajamas. When I moved back from Vancouver, because I was doing a show there, yeah. I came back and I got an agent here because I wasn't sure what to do, but I told her that I wasn't an actress. Like, please don't put me for acting things. I can't do it. Um, just hosting stuff. So she got this audition with this beauty company because they want me to uh, be a host on their channel. And I said, sure, why not? And I went for the audition. There was nothing to do with any of the products. They just wanted to see how I did, and I got it. And then I went in, and I read the script. And while we were doing it, literally halfway through, I'm reading the script, and they're recording. I start talking about the benefits of lamb placenta. <laughs> what? Yes. There's literally a video of me on the internet talking about lamb placenta. Don't Google it. I don't like <laughs> It's a whole thing. Lamp Everyone placenta. at home watching is Googling don't, this oh right now. No, that's the thing about hoodwinks. Like, you just don't know because you get pushed into these scenarios and you're like, yeah, sure. Oh my gosh, a gig. That's amazing. And she was so excited for me, my agent, because I hadn't booked anything. Right. So just go do this. And uh, it was awful. Yeah, lamp placenta. And then the second one Does was for steel placenta oil. Does work, though? <laughs> well, they gave me some samples. <laughs> Well, that was a clip from Marissa Roberto, and for her full interview, you'll need to check back next Monday for more Mistakes Were Made. If you enjoyed this one, please leave a rating and tell your friends. I'm still figuring out podcasting and keen to hear your thoughts, reactions, and feedback, so please send along any comments or constructive criticisms. Thanks for listening. I'm AJ Fry, and I'll see you in the future.